Hi, I'm Brian Langston. Uh, I'm a, a product manager with uh, Mirantis, and um, the things I am a product manager for include uh, Mirantis's op our operation support and tenant care solutions. Uh, I've spent uh, the last two years uh, prior to my product management role as a senior cloud architect and uh, the practice lead for North America team. So. Uh, so during that time, we've had a lot of uh, experience in seeing what's, what's really worked uh, across different cloud environments and what some of the good and the bad and the ugly has looked like uh, across uh, different uh, cloud deployments. So what I wanted to focus on for the time today is really uh, what some of those best practices are, what some of the things are that could, should be avoided in order to improve or increase adoption in, uh, in, uh, in the private cloud. And this is uh, focused on, on tenant care specifically. So first of all, as we looked across different, um, uh, diff different clouds, I kind of want to summarize uh, something that uh, we heard from Jonathan Bryce on Monday's keynote, right? And that is that there's this first generation uh, idea and we're kind of transitioning into the second generation. So using that uh, kind of classification, a couple of things I want to point out here that I might uh, put into this first generation syndrome bucket includes things like a poor or non-existent onboarding experience, right? I mean, many accounts uh, start off with maybe a POC, some kind of prototype, some kind of experimental deployment, then go straight from that into production without really thinking about how am I onboarding tenants and what's their experience like. Uh, other things include uh, maybe a poor cloud design. Uh, we've seen some, some of the, the more ugly examples include too many, service co too serv too many services co-located on too few uh, control nodes, uh, which obviously leads to uh, issues with instability and inflexibility and um, difficulty in separating that uh, after you're, you're already in a production mode. Um, other things, I mean, you can go, look through the list, maybe some of these resonate with you, but uh, the result in all of this, and this is what we kind of want to uh, highlight as things to avoid, is when our tenants uh, experience many of these things, they start to build up a, a data sheet uh, of reasons why this is not working for them, and they leave, right? They leave for other alternatives, they leave for public cloud or whatever. So that's something that we obviously want to avoid. <laughs> And what we should be doing is obviously focusing on delighting our customers, right? Thinking about their experience in our minds. And some of the things that uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, include things like, you know, the smooth and seamless onboarding experience, proactive support. You know, I don't have a Tesla, but uh, for a Tesla owner that I know, um, I've, I've heard that uh, when there is an issue uh, with Tesla and Tesla knows about it, they proactively call you and say, there's something that's going on, it's okay, bring it in and we'll get it fixed. But that was without the customer even knowing that there was a problem, right? So trying to kind of transfer that same idea, that approach to customer service and tenant care into the cloud experience, I think, can do to wonders. Visibility to workloads. Uh, this is, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this, but uh, some of these other things about clear and open change management, right? I mean, are we, really communicating changes that, uh, that our, our, our users ought to be aware of. So the idea here, take care of tenants and your tenants will take care of you. Obviously, if we're in the business of providing a, pri a private cloud experience, we have to focus on their experience and is it positive? Is it something that uh, they are going to, to stay with and why? Are they going to tell uh, their you know, peers uh, in your organization or whoever your customers are that, uh, that it's been a positive experience? So what can we do? Um, in Mirantis, we've been um, working on uh, various tenant care solutions. I think the way I wanna frame this is, is really about the cloud design, right? The platform services. What, what are those services that you're designing for? What kind of experience are you intending to deliver? Uh, so that starts with the design. Once you've got a design in place, really it's all about, all right, how do I onboard? Right? How do I get off of maybe my bare metal, you know, legacy enterprise IT environments into the cloud? Um, once tenants are there, 
what do they have? You know, do they have any visibility? Do they have access? Do they have awareness of, of what those resources are? So we'll get into a little bit more detail here in the next couple of slides. So platform services, uh, again, starts with cloud design. Maybe some questions that you might want to ask yourself is, is my cloud designed to be functional? Does it provide that good user experience? Um, if it started out as a POC mode and you're tra transitioning into production, how consumable really are these services? Are you really transferring your, your V1 automation or lack thereof into a production experience? Um, if so, it's, it's not going to pay you know, very good dividends. Uh, am I even offering services that align with what my tenants need? Do I effectively communicate services, features, and status? So is there, is there a role, really, that is focused on, on really communicating, identifying the customers, working with them to identify uh, what they're looking for? Workload management. Again, once you've got a cloud designed uh, properly for stability, reliability, and a good user experience, how do you get those users onto the cloud? Um, we've seen some cases where uh, there are, uh, there, there is no awareness of really who the tenants are, right? This might have been born by uh, the, you know, the, the first generation syndrome I mentioned earlier, maybe that uh, Jonathan Bryce was referring to in his keynote. When we start from, say, a POC, some kind of prototype experimental mode, um, do we even know who our tenants are, right? Did we just create capacity? and say, hey, you know, we, we want you to use it, right? Let's, let's start using it so that uh, I can tell my boss that uh, we, we've done it, right? We have people using it. But as that happens and it evolves into production, you kind of lose the, the, the feel, the awareness of, of who's, who's out there, right? Who is actually using my cloud by name, by email address, by workload? So we're trying to get to the, um, you know, encouraging that kind of tenant and cloud discovery uh, once, and, and again, you know, who is the role that's working on, on identifying uh, these kinds of, um, uh, you know, the, the tenant awareness and cloud discovery? Once we identify who really our tenants are, obviously we have to focus on what the workload is. How do we take, you know, the awareness of what they want uh, in their workload and translate that, map that specifically, and put our fingers on actual cloud uh, configurations and features? Uh, once that assessment is done, and there you know, are various methodologies for doing that, of course. Um, like I said earlier, maybe you know, your workload onboarding constitutes you know, transitioning some legacy application uh, from an enterprise legacy you know, data center onto the cloud for the first time. Or if you already have a cloud up, maybe you're doing some you know, workload mobility uh, from a cloud to cloud. So of course, there's different tools, and, and how that's done is downtime tolerated. If it's not, right, are you going to handhold? Are you going to, uh, you know, allow, kind of provide a, a self-service or so, kind of self-migration opportunity? Uh, so what I mean by workload management is really, um, you know, from environment to environment, this could obviously differ. But uh, so, you know, workload management might uh, take a different forms across any of those three activities. Our definition of workload management uh, traditionally kind of stops at that point before application uh, lifecycle management. Uh, what we typically see is most companies already have a pretty good idea of how to do, you know, the application LCM. If you're doing uh, application performance management, you've probably already got an APM kind of a tool. So the challenge really is what happens before that, right? If we're introducing a new cloud uh, architecture, uh, transitioning from VMware to OpenStack, right? There's there's the issues that happen all the way up into the point that the workload is on the cloud that um, uh, needs to be solved. And then typically, again, the application teams have some tooling that can be applied on top of that. So that's workload management. Um, platform visibility. When I talk about a lack of visibility, uh, there's a couple things I want to point out. You know, conflicting views of workload state. I don't know how many times you guys in your clouds uh, might have had users that call up and they say, uh, I've got an issue with my workload. Um, something's not working right. And the operator on the other side's going, well, uh, it looks like my APIs are up, my storage is working, my network is, is working. I don't see your problem, right? And, you know, the phone, the phone call ends. Roughly, right? Generalizing, of course. But uh, even that literal example happens too frequently from what we've seen. 
and so, you know, where we have a tenant uh, seeing one view of the cloud uh, and the operator seeing a different one, that's, that's not good, right? Uh, that kind of establishes uncertainty, right? Some doubt in the quality and reliability of the cloud. It kind of breeds and fosters distrust, right? If I can't trust the operators that they're not looking, they don't, they're not looking out for me, right? They're looking out for the platform, right? The infrastructure. Um, that's dissatisfaction. And again, if tenants develop enough of a rap sheet against their experience, they are going uh, to uh, alternatives. So uh, in our view, platform visibility services should provide a better insights to tenants, right? What can you provide them to give them more visibility to their workloads? Um, you know, do they have a consistent view of the cloud? Yeah, can we kind of close the gap between operators and tenants? Uh, there, of course, are other stakeholders in the cloud, technical account managers, cloud business owners. Uh, there should be a coordinated view of the cloud across all those key stakeholders. Wrapping up the whole uh, idea here of tenant care, of course, you know, includes program management. Is there somebody who is focused, you know, with their, uh, with their role in the organization, focused on providing a, a positive experience for, for tenants? This could take the form of a customer success manager, a technical account manager, maybe there's some other names for that kind of a role. Is there a feedback loop with tenants? If there is a feedback loop, uh, does an NPS score, is that included? Uh, for some organizations that do have an NPS score, is it positive? <laughs> there are plenty of organizations we've seen that have an NPS score implemented, uh, some methodology to collect that, and it's negative. So uh, are, you above, are you above zero? So, um, so that's kind of the summary of what I wanted to share. Of course, this is a high-level overview. Um, happy to discuss more details offline, but uh, in summary, again, you know, how is the cloud designed? How is it built? Is it built for how many nines availability and resiliency? Uh, workload management, how are you getting that, uh, your, your tenants onboarded? And then once they are there, what are, you know, if you're providing infrastructure as a service, are you following that up? with some kind of visibility to those tenants. And then of course, uh, ensuring that you have executive support in the form of a uh, program manager who can focus on the people, the processes, the methodologies, and the technology uh, that are required to make this happen. So thank you for your time.